Scott! Oh, thank you. Well, here we are. I'm, um, I'm completely just, well, I'm fucked. Um, my uh, kids are both in their 30s now, you know, which means I can't talk about them anymore. Well, that's what their lawyer told me. <laughs> but no, they, they are. They're both in their 30s. They live overseas. My son and his girlfriend live in Nashville. They're musos, alt country, you know, which means, you know, they're poor. And, um, and my daughter lives in New York. She's a visual artist, which means, you know, she's very, very poor. But, but they're both, look, they're brilliant. They're brilliant artists. I'm very proud of them. People say, do I miss them? And look, put it this way. The last time my son left to go back to America and walk through those departure doors at the airport and they closed, I may or may not have fallen to the ground and screamed, come back, mummy's got nothing left to live for. (laughs) So of course, seriously, of course I miss them and especially now during these lockdown times but if there's one thing I've learnt as a parent, it's this, it doesn't matter where in the world your kids are. It doesn't matter what in the world is going on. It doesn't matter how old they are. They will always need your unconditional money. (laughs) So I'm in my mid-60s now, and uh, so all the... Literature tells you you've got to fight the ageing process. You don't give in to it. You, you, you fight it. You stay on top of it. But I've got to be honest and tell you that every part of my being is just screaming, I can't be fuck doing anything. <laughs> and I know they didn't want language, but it's what's there. You know, I truly... It's seriously, I'm just speaking truth. All I want to do is lie in bed and drink. (laughs) And yes, it is hard to lie in bed and drink at the same time. So thank God for bendy straws. In fact, the only thing that gets me to sit up these days is my acid reflux. (laughs) But it doesn't mean, you know, being in your 60s, it doesn't mean life still can't be an adventure. Like, for instance, last year, I went on Dancing with the Stars. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Bullshit. You were in Celebrity, whatever it is, Jungle. No wonder you whooped. We're both losers. But, um, but no, I went on Dancing I, last year. I went on Dancing with the Stars, and which is a TV show where celebrities get teamed up with a professional dancer and you do ballroom dancing and there's three judges and each week they give you a score out of ten. And, um, look, I found it hellish, absolute hell, I won't lie, but that third week I gave it everything I had and I managed to score a nine. In total. Uh, Craig, the nasty judge, gave me a one and called me a hunchback. But you get over it. Um, Shana, the lovely judge, literally said, Denise, wow. Wow. Denise, girlfriend, wow. She's not American, but I don't know what the accent is. But anyway, wow, girlfriend, you are an inspiration, you are living your best life. Which I think we all know means you're dancing shit and if I were you, I'd kill myself. (sighs) And look, speaking of suicidal thoughts, I had to share a dressing room during that series with Michelle Bridges. Now, Michelle is a wonderful person, but you know who she is. She's the fitness guru the most beautiful body on the planet. I had to get undressed in the same room as Michelle. I, I mean, and when you, I, I had to nude up. As I said to Michelle, do you mind if we turn the lights off? <laughs> and Michelle had to get undressed. So we're nude. Me and Michelle, nudes, she's got a G-string on. She had a little costume, a little mini, little mini dress, strapless thing. She asked me to zip her up. Was it cruel of me to pretend I couldn't do it? Oh, jeez. Jeez, Michelle. What'd you have for dinner, you fatso? Anyway. 
So uh, that was that. Oh, oh, well, and of course, these days during lockdown, you keep your mind active. We've, we've had to get around new technologies like Zooming. And uh, some of my friends have actually asked me for Zoom advice. And uh, I, look, the only tip I can offer, I don't know whether this will help anyone else, but when I'm at the computer and, and I'm trying to Zoom, something goes wrong, what I do is simply turn my head to the left and scream, John! <laughs> and um, it's usually fixed in a few minutes. <laughs> So that's that. Oh, the other thing I've done during lockdown, uh, I don't know if this has happened to you, but you find yourself just staring at things you've never looked at in your house before. Like, seriously, I came across this book. I don't know who bought it. I don't know when it was bought. But this is seriously a book called Wabinda. Can you see that if I do that? Um, it was written in 1970 and it's about a vet in the outback, who is helped by his daughter, his 18-year-old daughter, Tiggy. And um, we've got a picture of Tiggy here. Can you see 18-year-old Tiggy? Um, there, it's 1970, that's Tiggy. Uh, she, uh, what does it, she excels in sport, wears modern clothes and likes to keep herself suntanned. And I thought... Why would she do that? Why would she like to wear clothes and keep, keep herself suntanned? That wasn't Instagram then. Was she just doing that for fun? It's crazy. Um, now, also, I must say, this is how we all looked back in 1970. Um, you know, we, we, because strong and uh, sexy and about 20 years older than we were. Uh, the sun did terrible damage back then. But seriously, um, we didn't have, of course, computers back then. We didn't have social media. Uh, and if you were Catholic, um, which I can see Tiggy was, <laughs> if you were Catholic, you see, you couldn't use birth control. It was a sin. Masturbation was a sin. So the way us Catholic girls relieved our sexual tension was to have races across rivers whilst carrying a wet lamb. <laughs> <laughs> It was great. Uh, anyway, that's just... That took us back on a nostalgia trip. Uh, so, just before lockdown happened, uh, so back in February, the first lockdown, in February, John, uh, my partner of 40 years, let's face it, um, just out of the blue announced, guess what, Scotty, I'm going to have a colonoscopy tomorrow. I know, talk about attention-seeking. <laughs> What a nightmare. What a carry-on it was. Anyway, he'd done the bowel cancer screening kit, you know, so it was a part of that reaction. To, so good. So he's got to go off, have a colonoscopy. Before you have a colonoscopy, you've got to take a thing called pico prep, which is to evacuate your bowels. That's what it says on the side of the box. Evacuate your bowels. Now, is it only me, but I'm picturing... A little cartoon animated doctor looking up John's asshole, going, prepare to evacuate, prepare to evacuate. And all the little t turds, you know, popping on their life vests, getting ready to whiz down the slide. Which is exactly how the poo comes out after you've taken Pico Prep. Which is why it's suggested that after taking it, you stay near a toilet. Which is why when John, after taking the Pico Prep, said to me, Scotty, I'm going to work, specifically, he was going to drive 45 minutes down the freeway to a primary school where he was running a stilt walking workshop. I said, John, you cannot do that. He said, why? I said, because you've taken stuff to evacuate your bowels. <laughs> and he, in his typical, I'm a man, I know better than everyone, even the manufacturers of Pico Prep, <laughs> said to me, Scotty, I'll be fine. At which point I yelled at him, well, John, I hope you shit your pants. <laughs> It'll be a good lesson in humility for you. <laughs> I said, and John said to me, I... I could have cancer, and that's all you've got to say. I hope you shit your pants, John. Well, you are atrocious. And I said, and you 
are an idiot. <laughs> and then we were fine. That's what being together 40 years, you know. So John had, look, I'll have to say, no kids. He went, he did the workshop, didn't shit his pants. Gee, he ran down our hallway, though, when he got home, I can tell you. And, uh, and he had the colonoscopy all fine. Except, seriously, he said, do you want to see the photos of his colon? Like, why the... F- I said, I'm, well, no, but I'd love one for my wallet in case the girls at book club want to have a look. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll leave you with it because, you know, I, having a lockdown birthday, not, I, look, who cares? It was my 65th. I didn't want a present from John, of course not. I don't care. He did. He gave me a book because I love reading. And he gave me a book called The Luminaries, which is a, a fabulous novel. Like, it's 850 pages thick. It's a fat novel. And I opened up this gift and I said, oh, John, you've given me this. And he said, well, yeah, I heard someone raving about it. And I said, well, gee, John, I think that someone might have been me (laughs) because I've been lying beside you in bed for the last six months reading it. (laughs) Okay, that's, that's me. That's angry me lockdown. Thank you very much.